So what do I miss most about the 508? That's kind of hard because I miss everything. Um, but what I miss the most really is just the community and my family really. Um, I was recently going through and watching these videos that we took on New Year's Eve and we all learned how to do this dance and we were standing kind of in the middle of a bunch of confetti and just having fun and recording these funny videos. It just, it's such, it was just so great to bring in the new year, surrounded by people that I care about and that just have played such a huge role in my life. Um, so I definitely just miss hanging out with everyone and just spending time with them, for sure. So what I'm most excited for, kind of most looking forward to, definitely just getting back into worship together. Um, what I would give and do to be back at a 508 night um, during worship and you know have all of us together up at the front near the stage with our hands raised and singing together and just praising together um, there's just 
nothing compares to that feeling in that environment. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to um, getting that back. What do I miss most about the 508? Man, I just think back to all the times hanging out with the squad and hanging out with the team. Uh, just doing absolutely ridiculous nonsense. Just being, just having a good time, goofing around. Uh, I remember, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but we did the hot wings challenge and it was absolutely hysterical. I feel like I'm having a heart attack right now. Hold on. Oh my, oh my goodness, dude. I feel like I'm dying. I put my face in, my mouth in snow. <laughs> oh my God. It tastes like mold. <laughs> Um, but we felt the repercussions many days later um, and it was just a lot of fun and I miss being around those guys and miss being around uh, miss being around the family and, and miss being just silly. The one thing I'm looking most forward to is getting back in person and being able to experience community together. I know the worship is going to be on fire. I know Deb's going to bring an amazing word. I know it's going to be so timely. I know it's going to be necessary. I know it's exactly what we're going to need to hear. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing so many familiar faces, so many new faces. Uh, I just can't wait to get back. We miss you 508 so, so much. But what did we miss most about our live in-person experience at the 508? What I miss most is being able to be all together with all of our friends and family in the Holy Spirit, being able to be in the presence of God, letting our guard down and being all together doing that. I miss it so much. There's absolutely nothing like that experience. And we can't wait to see you again in person and just be in the presence of God together. All right, what do I miss most about the five weights? Good question. Here's the first thing that comes to my mind. I'm a hugger, okay? So I'm, I'm like, my love language is touch, okay? And so I would prefer to give people some hugs. That's number one. But number two, I, I would say, to be honest with you, uh, the only person I don't want to hug is Pastor Devin. <laughs> okay. And I know what you're thinking. Why is that the case? Well, he, he still has a nice head of hair, okay? And do I have a little bit of envy about it? I don't know. I might, okay? I mean, I'm 26 years old, no hair, he's got a beautiful head of hair, so I won't hug him, but that's the thing I'm gonna miss most, for sure.
stepped into my Egypt And you took me by the hand You marched me out of freedom Into the promised land Now I will not forget you, God I sing a voice Guys, was that not awesome? I thought that was awesome. You should think that was awesome. Are you are you ready right now for a fire word from my pastor, Devin Fry of the 508? He's about to bring the absolute heat. Sit back, grab your Bibles, grab your notes, get ready to take some notes. Grab your grandma if you want, or your cat. I don't know what you're into. And sit back because this is gonna be awesome. Anybody ever been on an airplane before and experienced turbulence? My Gosh, there is no more fearful, intimidating, anxious filled experience in your life than when you're on an airplane. I don't care what spectrum of faith you are on, whether you have no faith, whether you are full of it, uh, going on a turbulent airplane will turn an atheist into a spirit filled, tongue talking believer. I'm not kidding you. I remember going down to Brazil, my wife and I are going down there. I'm the only one on the entire plane that does not speak Portuguese walk onto this plane, and we are right over the ocean, okay? So right below us, all I see, oh, looking out the window, all is water, okay? And then we experienced this incredible turbulence. My son was knocked out, out cold. The dude felt like he was like totally on drugs. I and mean, he was, by the way, it was melatonin. He was knocked out in seconds. It was the weirdest fight I've ever seen. Like literally, we gave him drugs and he's like, <laughs> and he, just, and he just goes back down to sleep. It was so funny. Anyways, completely different story. Um, we're over the ocean and I'm like freaking out because meanwhile I'm like I'm trying to be you know the poised calm father and leader and, you know supposed to be fearless my wife's over here she's like gripping my arm and I don't know if you guys have ever experienced like you know when a pregnant woman grabs your arm and it's like the most intense grip on the planet that's what she did she wasn't even pregnant I'm not kidding like Lydia had to feel like I amputated my arm at that point I'm freaking out too. So I'm supposed to be calm for my wife, calm for my son. Meanwhile, everybody on the plane is speaking Portuguese. And I'm thinking to myself, what are they all saying? All I hear is panic, chaos. It was one of the most anxious moments I've ever had in my entire life. I don't know if anybody's been there before, but I've been there before. Um, let's, let's talk serious for a second, because I think a lot of us have experienced anxiety, depression, maybe even panic attacks. I've had a panic attack in my life before. I never want to have it again. So the question is, how do we overcome anxiety? Here's what I want to do. I want to spiritually diagnose it first and foremost. There are practical ways we can, you know, go about it. But really what it is, is I don't really want to address the symptoms. I want to address the sickness. So why are we experiencing what we're experiencing? When you go through ups and downs, I think there is situational depression. And I think there are times where absolutely, you know, chaos is around you and it creates stress in the body, creates stress in the mind. I, I, I'm not talking about those moments. I'm talking about the moments where because of how we think, because of maybe something spiritual, we are experiencing the anxiety that we are experiencing. So really what it comes down to is this word control. It's control. 
That's what we need to address. See, because America as a whole, uh, anxiety and prescription medication is a $2 billion business. B -b billion dollar business. It is huge. It's an astronomical business. And we are always looking for prescriptions, but we're not looking for healing. There's numbing happening, but healing is not happening. So we need to diagnose the deeper rooted problem. So I'm not, I'm not into, you know, talking about behavioral changes. I'm into talking about belief. And that's what we need to discuss right now, because how do you overcome anxiety? It's a belief issue, not a behavior issue. So here's a thought I want to give you and write this down in your notes is this worry is not just a waste of time. It's a waste of life. Worry is not just a waste of time, it's a waste of life. So many of us are wasting our lives away worrying about things that likely will never happen. Many people are worrying about things that will never happen in their entire lives. How many times can we look back in our lives and realize, oh, I worried about things that literally never took place. That happens so regularly. But what happens is because of our anxiety, because of that depression, because of that negative thinking, it is literally wasting our lives. Our bones could be rotting because what happens in the mind oftentimes affects the actual body. So worry is not just a waste of time. It's a waste of life. And so the question I want to ask you is this, is what is in control in your life? What is in control? Who is a better question? The problem with anxiety is all about control. Those two are tethered together. That's the spiritual problem. And so here's the issue is we either don't know who is in control because you might be on this faith journey kind of figuring out life and who God is and what God's about. So you may not know who is in control or the deeper problem is for many people, we don't trust the one who's in control. That hits home for a lot of people, I guarantee you. It's either we don't know who is in control or we don't trust the one who is in control. And so Romans 8, 28, here's our scripture for tonight. It says Romans 8, 28. Uh, and we know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purposes. We know God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And so listen to me, because this is a truth in scripture. You can take this to the bank, cash it and check it. This is what God is about. He is a good God. He is a loving God. He is a God that is in control. And you need to rest in the fact that he sees things far beyond what we see. It's been said many times, God, we see to the corner, God sees around the corner. And so although right now you're experiencing some of the lack of control, you know, right now at the time of this recording, we're in the middle of coronavirus season, there's racial tension everywhere, there's political polarization, there's a lot of things to be anxious about. But we have to understand, you are not the one in control. Or if you believe in God, you have to learn how to trust in God. I'll finish with this thought. It's this, it's two beliefs you need to have. Is number one, God is in control, and God loves me. God is in control, and God loves me. And so you need to understand God's credentials. Why is it so important to know his character in times of anxiety, or how do you overcome anxiety? Ultimately, anxiety is a result of our lack of control. And you need to learn how to trust in God and know his credentials. Let's bring back the story of the airplane for a minute. Because when I was on the airplane, I was feeling definitely fearful, tons of anxiousness. I was honestly fearful for my life. And I thought about my son and my wife's life. And we were totally fine. Obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're good. But in that moment, we experienced tons of worry and tons of anxiety and it can rot your bones. And so what we needed to do is we needed to take inventory of the credentials of the pilot. And watch, oh, cause this is so good. The inventory of the pilot. See, a lot of times pilots, <laughs> they used to fly when uh, they were in wars. So these pilots that are now flying commercialized flights, a lot of them were in wars. And so they're used to being shot at. They're used to being in danger zones and in very dangerous territory. And so it's been said amongst pilots that I just was reading this, that many pilots, the only time they're having fun flying is when they're going through a little bit of turbulence. And so actually, if you think about that for a second, that thought, it actually brings a lot of peace knowing that these pilots are so well trained and they're trained in crazy territories, crazy environments, amongst crazy circumstances. And so if I knew the credentials of the pilot, that this is nothing he hasn't seen before, uh, that gives me incredible trust. I can put my faith in the pilot because I know his credentials. And let me just tell you something about God. The greatest thing about God is we know his credentials. We know that he is a God that is good. We know that he is a God that is in control. We also know that he is a God that loves us. And so if we know those three things, that God is good, 
God is in control and he loves us. That, my friends, equals your peace. Hey guys, JD here. Listen, thank you so much for joining tonight. Uh, that was so much fun and we really hope that that message blessed you. If it did, please let us know. Uh, we want to hear from you. If it is your first time or you just want to serve on our team and get plugged in, you're going to want to go to Guest Lounge happening directly after this. It is a Zoom after party. Just click into the link in the chat and it'll redirect you. We're, we're also giving away free stuff, so you definitely don't want to miss that. Now, if you just want to get plugged into a small group here at the 508, just click on the notes tab. It'll take you to our small group directory where you can find the right group for you. And if you just want to be up to date on content, just please follow us on social media. You're not going to want to miss out on anything we're posting. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope to see you later.